There is new evidence Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative disorders could possibly be passed from one person to another through medical procedures. A study of the brains of eight people who died of the rare but deadly creutzfeldt jakob disease, which shares certain characteristics with Alzheimer's, shows they contracted it decades after being given human growth hormone treatments from contaminated human tissue. The paper was published in the journal Nature. And here to discuss is Dr. Simon Ridley of Alzheimer's Research UK. Dr. Ridley, thanks for being with us. How significant is the information found from the autopsies of these eight patients' brains? Well, I think it's scientifically very interesting and potentially significant. But I think the significance in this to, to people uh, and anybody who's listening to this and worried I think has been overplayed somewhat over mm -hmm. the last day or so. So I think the first thing we should do is offer reassurance to anybody who's worried. It's important to remember that the people who are unfortunate to die of creutzfeldt jakob disease, who were unfortunate enough to have received this contaminated treatment, uh, we didn't actually know if they had Alzheimer's disease. They, did, they died from CJD before then. Mm -hmm. And for a proper diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease post-mortem, one needs to see both amyloid protein and tau protein uh, right. built up in the brain. And they, they, didn't, they only saw one of those, the amyloid. Right. And they died, all eight subjects died quite young, I understand, correct? That's right, of the, of the deadly CJD. So we don't yeah. know if they had lived longer whether they had developed Alzheimer's disease. So that's the first thing. The other thing that's important to remember is certainly uh, in the UK, this type of uh, growth hormone preparation was discontinued uh, in, in the mid-80s. So, so this is historical. It, it's uh, awful for the people involved to, who had to go through what was very traumatic and, and horrible. Sure. Uh, so, Doctor, does this mean, though, that scientists now believe that human tissue, as opposed to solely genetic and environmental factors, can transmit Alzheimer's, or is that still being studied? Well, I think it certainly shows, and, and animal research has shown as well, that, that there is a possibility if you take brain tissue which has pathology of, as we know, CJD, or maybe Alzheimer pathology, and you transfer that directly to a brain of another mammal, mm -hmm. including a human, you may transfer that, that, um, that pathology. So does this potentially have implications for blood transfusions or contaminated surgical instruments as well? No, I think not. And the reason I think not is that since there's the scare about CJD from the 1980s, mm -hmm. those types of procedures have been rigorously amended uh, accordingly. There's no epidemiological evidence also right. that if you have a blood transfusion, you're more likely to uh, um, develop Alzheimer's disease. And certainly this new research was not looking into other ways of transmitting. So I really, I, th I think people should not worry about this unnecessarily because uh, th these procedures, I think, are far safer than they were a long time ago. But doctor, then should those people who perhaps received human growth hormone during certain years, as you said, especially up to the 80s, should they try to tack track down the source of those hormone extracts to verify they didn't come from a contaminated cadaver? Well, I can't talk for the US, but in the UK, this is being done. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important that we understand those that are still alive, and many of them are, thankfully, and most of them, it's fair to say, have not gone on to develop these horrible illnesses. And so it's important that we understand that, absolutely. And going forward, do you consider human growth hormone treatments to be safe? Absolutely, because they're made in an entirely different way. Mm -hmm. So that, at that time, this is before uh, recombinant DNA technology was, was able to make them from a very different uh, uh, way. The same with many drugs now, that they're not, we don't extract hormones from, from people now and give them to other people. Thank you so much, Dr. Simon Ridley, from that. We just want to clarify, you were not part of the study, but are very familiar with it. Thank you for your time. Thank you.